Well, it wouldn't be an NVIDIA launch if it wasn't uh, laced with scandals, apparently. I don't know how much of a scandal this is, but we I'm, of course, talking about some of the latest news regarding uh, a couple pieces of news, actually. Quote, unquote, melting cables. We'll talk about that in a second. That one's sort of been debunked. But now, apparently, 5090s are bricking themselves on the latest driver, which, looking at the drivers, is the only driver that exists for the 5090 currently. So, uh, yeah, here we go again. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreate it with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving seven days premium time, one million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier five premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. Uh, okay, so as I'm obviously flanked by what people are now dubbing a couple of paperweights, um, let's talk about the driver. So it appears to be driver related. But, well, okay, let me back up. We have to talk about why we're even talking about this. Let's only go back three launches, okay? 50, 50 series, 40 series, 30 series. When 30 series launched, do you guys remember the whole like, New World is killing 3090s, 30, New World is killing 3090s, but what really was discovered was that New World and the way that that engine was designed and the way that the game ran and the resources needed just sort of highlighted a bigger problem that existed within the 30 series, which was some of the power management stuff and the POS caps, which may or may not have been a problem. Some of the cards, anyway, um, it was causing them to sort of brick and kind of die because it inadvertently became like a fur mark uh, without any of those protections we talked about with fur mark, how the clocks will automatically drop when fur mark is detected to be the uh, the source of the uh, engine or the graphics card ramping up. So that was one of those things that just kind of it was like a I don't want to say a happy accident, but it was more of an accident. Uh, but it's still out, it still it, it exposed a larger problem with the 30 series, uh, specifically the 3090 graphics cards and some 3080 Ti's because they were uh, technically the same die as the 3090. Um, anyway, moving on to and there were other things that happened in 30 series, but moving on to 40 series, let's not forget obviously the 12 volt high power melting connector problem, which is continues to exist for a lot of people. Um, power supplies the, on the power supply end, on the cable end, on the GPU side, things have been, been slightly tweaked. We've made many videos about it throughout 2023 and parts of 2024, talking about the ATX 3.1 standard and the pin changes when it comes to the way the pins are designed inside of the 24 uh, or the 12 pin connector. Um, we're not gonna go into all that again today, but the problem seems to have become less widespread for 40 series cards, but for a long time there, it seemed like every single day, a new 4090 or two or three or five were popping up on Reddit with completely melted connectors. So there was that, which leads to a lot of people concerned about 5090 because it is admittedly pulling significantly more power through that cable, which was already shown to have been melting. Um, I think it's a problem that's gonna exist for people that are still running potentially the older um, cable and the older ATX 3.0 spec and are not running the latest ATX 3.1. I don't expect people are going to run out and start replacing, you know, expensive power supplies for that new standard. Now you can change the cable, but if the PSU side is not matching the new spec, then it's kind of only half of the problem being fixed and th there's still potential for issue there. All of the graphics cards on 50 series though, their power plug and has been updated to the 3.1 standard. So if you're running a 3.1 cable with a 3.1 graphics card, so far we haven't seen any of those melting. Well, except for that one report that made its way around. But the thing is, in today's competition and people fighting for views, if you will, a lot of sites are very quick to sort of jump to conclusions and sensationalize headlines. And it's kind of like the written article version of clickbait. Um, it's unfortunate that it's sort of the name of the game to get people to see your article and a sea of people jumping up and down screen, screaming, read me, read me, or watch me, watch me, right? So you have to stand out somehow and sensationalism, unfortunately, is just 
sort of part, part of the name of the game. So there was this there was this image that popped up on many people's Reddit feed, Twitter feed, whatever feed you guys belong to of the actual cables themselves. And you can see this is a 600 watt cable. I suspect that might've been a Corsair cable. It looks very much like a Corsair cable. I could be wrong, but from the pictures that I can see, it looks like a Corsair cable, which for us has been one of the most solid cables with the highest gauge we've ever seen on the 12 volt high power stuff. Um, melted, like the insulation of the cable itself melted at, like before the plug and apparently melted on both sides, power supply side and GPU side. Now that was a, a company that was doing testing with uh, 50 series and 40 series, but apparently they discovered that uh, it was actually melted on the 4090. And then they used the cable on the 5090 and didn't notice it till the 5090. And then they went back and inspected the 4090 and saw that it had some mel melting marks and such on the cable or on the and its own plug, but the 5090 stuff did not. So again, one of those articles that was headlined to get people to click on it and to get people to sort of start talking about it without ever reading the article and then misinformation was spread rampant. So I can tell you right now, as of right now, 5090 cables have not been melting, but I don't think we're going to be saying that for all that long. I think at some point we're going to see some cables have full on meltdowns because of the reasons I've already su suggested. Potentially older ATX 3.0 standard was melting on a 450 watt card. What do you expect it to potentially do on a 575 watt card if they're not running the, the latest pins and, and updates and stuff there? I mean, and don't forget, the, they do pull more power than spec. Like for instance, out of the box, they'll pull 575 to 600 watts without touching any power sliders. The Zotac card right here, which is an overclocked card, is pulling 600 plus out of the box. It's pulling closer to 630 sustained, depending on the load. And then our PMD2 starts to alarm at us and it sounds like this. I didn't even know the PMD2 had an alarm built in, but it's telling us, bro. Okay, so with that one sort of debunked, let's move on now to the bigger one, which is the apparent driver, which only one driver exists right now for the 5090. It came out January 30th. That was the on shelf availability day, <laughs> availability day. And that's driver 572.16 from NVIDIA. That doesn't matter if it's the game ready driver or the studio driver, that is the, so it's the only driver that exists. But if you start to read the articles, um, You'll see that this is a appears to be a somewhat widespread problem on 5090D specifically. Now, if you're not sure what the D is, um, that is actually. Let's rewind for a second here. If you're not familiar what the uh, 5090D is, then that is actually specifically a, a SKU designed for the China market because of the uh, U.S. China econ economic sanction type stuff happening. It's, it's one of the ways to get around some of the trade limitations that have been put in place between the US and China. So even though they're manufactured in China, they have to have a specific China variant that they can sell to in China because it is a American owned company, which is what Nvidia is. So that's why the, the, the 5090D exists. Now, what is happening if you read some of these articles is apparently people are putting in their 5090 and Windows will load a basic VGA driver. It'll just, that way you get an image, right? It's not gonna do anything special. It's just gonna display an image. And then you download the driver and install it. Well, what's apparently happening is uh, the 5090D is bricking itself. And that's another term that I think we need to use a little bit more sparingly if you wanna know the truth. Um, after the driver is installed, the screen is going black. And then what's happening is the operating system slash motherboard is no longer recognizing the card anymore. Like it doesn't, it doesn't identify as a video card. So you don't get any BIOS splash screen. You can't get into the BIOS with it. It basically just kind of makes the card no longer work. Um, so you can find tons and tons of articles about this actually. One that I want to point out here though, I just want to call this article out as, as kind of garbage <laughs> because of the fact that people are going to use opportunities like this to push narratives that they really want to push. And I'm not defending NVIDIA. I'm actually just condemning this particular article. I'm, I won't link it. I'll just say the headline. You guys can find it yourself. It says people's RTX 5090s are bricking themselves and nobody quite knows why. There's three bullet points at the top of the article. It says RTX 5090 graphics cards are bricking themselves when attempting to update drivers. Now, technically it's not updating the driver. It is installing the driver for the first time because uh, no previous versions of NVIDIA drivers will work. So, Windows isn't fetching an old driver to run the card. It's just loading a basic VGA driver to run the card because the card is not identified as a working card with any other driver. So it has to be running 572.16 to work. 
uh, if you run an older graphics card, then it could grab a driver that's 10, 10 versions old, but it would still work under NVIDIA's driver parameters. That's not what's happening here. 50 series cards, if you don't install the driver, install basic VGA, that's it. The second bullet point says, brands like Gigabyte and Asus are selling these, model selling these models are affected by this unknown issue. Then the third bullet point is where the eyebrow, the, the, uh, the rock eyebrow should really raise up says Intel's Battlemage GPUs can capitalize on this NVIDIA problem, offering an opportunity for success. Yeah, because nothing says, screw your $2,000 graphics card, go buy a $250 one. Anyway, moving on, uh, the article has a whole bunch of nothing in it. And then at the bottom, it says, while NVIDIA has a nasty and expensive issue on its hands, Intel is likely poised to gain from this. After all, there are plenty of reasons why Intel's Battlemage GPUs are what the market needs and is now the perfect time for the company to gain a foothold on the market with Team Green Flounders. <laughs> Jeez. I'm only pointing that out because people like to call me a shill. That's fine. I have my preferences like anybody else, but that is shilling. That, that is shilling right there. It is, in fact, there's even a link like in reasons why Intel's Battlemage GPUs are what the market needs links to an article for that. So anyway, I just wanted to point out this article because it is actually pretty sickening. Um, there's no real information in there. So moving on to the Tech Power Up article, which can be a much more level-headed type of news outlet. Um, it says, according to widespread user reports from Chinese tech forums, Reddit communities, uh, multiple 5090 and 5090D, gra 5090D graphics cards are failing permanently after standard driver installations. It's interesting to me because technically 5090 should not be in the Chinese market like this. So I. I I personally haven't seen anyone reporting that their 5090 has died here in the US, but I'm not saying that I guess there couldn't be any in China. But anyway, uh, it says it affects the both standard version and the export modified 5090D variant released for the Chinese market on the 30th. Users report constant failure patterns. Upon initial driver installation, displays go dark and the system permanently lose the ability to detect the GPU through both DisplayPort and HDMI interfaces. Hardware fa failures have been documented across multiple board partners with colorful, manly, and gigabyte cards showing identical symptoms. Third-party vendor reports sometimes indicate potential IC burn damage, suggesting hardware level fa failure rather than recoverable software issues. So that's the, that's the scary part right there is the IC burn damage. Now, I, that's the part that it's gonna take some time before you would ever hear like NVIDIA respond to any of this. <laughs> Remember how long it took for NVIDIA to respond to the cable stuff? So I, I, can't, I can't quite figure out how a driver installation could cause hardware failure, unless the hardware itself is just really kind of doing nothing under that, v, that, that VGA standard uh, driver that Windows installs. And then once the standard driver is installed, uh, it then goes into 3D accelerator mode for the desktop and all the other stuff that could actually access the GPU. And there's just, I don't know, there's a comma in the wrong spot in the VBIOS or the driver somewhere affecting the, I, I really couldn't say. This is, it's really hard to imagine a driver install causing a hardware failure. Uh, unless this is just purely coincidental at this point. I really couldn't say. But I can tell you that I have had cards in the past that would do weird funky crashes and like just, these are like degraded GPUs in some way that people have either sent us to play around with or whatever that will crash when trying to game and do stuff. But before installing the driver, everything would work fine in Windows. Like I could navigate Windows or an open file explorer, open browsers and whatnot. It's just, it's just a general adapter at that point, a video adapter. But then as soon as I would install the driver, then I would start getting weirdness and crashing at desktop and, and hangs and system restarts and stuff. So it, Installing the driver, I think, can potentially activate components in the card that could potentially then have a hardware issue that rears its ugly head as soon as the driver's installed. So maybe these cards were bad from the beginning. It just took the driver to really sort of show that. The thing is, any articles that you really read right now um, are not gonna have any real concrete data because these need to be investigated. And this is gonna be a difficult one to investigate anyone here in the US because these are all in China. Right now, these are, these. this is, very limited type of report to the China market. Um, so he, they have some, so in the Tech Power Up article, they do have some ideas. Some investigations point to PCIe Gen 5 implementation as a possible root cause. 5090 uh, series represents NVIDIA's first fully Gen 5 compliant GPU architecture. 
uh, inter introducing new signal, signal integrity challenges. As you've probably heard about certain riser cables and stuff won't work, our, our metering device won't work with it, even if it's set to Gen 4. So it could be something there. Additional complications arrive from, arise from the modern, modern motherboard designs that share PCIe lanes between 5 uh, M.2 and graphics slots. And the failure pattern appears consistent across both domestic and international markets. On our ASUS, users report identical de detection failures persisting through CMOS resets and system rebuilds. So they're saying uh, domestic market right there, which is referring to the US. Chinese forum documentation shows systematic failures across multiple board partner implementations, suggesting a fundamental architecture or driver compatibility issue rather than isolated manufacturing defects. So that's sounding, Nvidia has not responded or offered guidance <laughs> yet, hopefully. So, I mean, is, <laughs> can we not have things just work? these days is this where we are? are we are we now like every launch it doesn't matter if it's an amd product or an intel product or an nvidia product that everything just has to suck i i'm kind of surprised this launched uh six days ago i haven't gotten personally any emails of anyone saying hey jay have you seen this reddit article normally when this stuff happens i'll get like tons like flooded emails and stuff haven't seen anything yet but i think right now this might just be the smoking gun at this point and who knows what this is going to turn into a deeper dive. So we'll we'll kind of circle back as more information uh, kind of becomes more concrete, mostly because all seven of you who've bought 5090s that follow this channel uh, need to know if there's something you need to do to kind of protect your card or your investment or your system. And uh, if you already have it and you have an experience of failure, that's great, but it doesn't mean something couldn't happen in the future. So we'll talk about this as we learn more, especially if we have suggestions on ways to protect your stuff from failure. But until then, those are the reports. Sound off down in the comments below with what you guys have heard. A lot of it's gonna be conjecture, con conjecture, but uh, I'm really interested if anyone out there watching this has firsthand experience with this problem. If you do, please email me at uh, jsuesense at gmail.com. I would love to get more information from you about your system specs, your, your hardware, your Windows version, all that sort of stuff, because we wanna start learning more about what's happening. I haven't experienced anything other than what I showed you guys with the Z Zotac card, and that seemed to be pretty specific to the overclocking software. It all worked fine out of the box with no problems other than that. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.